I am here at the grocery store. I'm at Whole Foods and I'm gonna walk you guys through the store, show you what to look for when buying groceries. We're also going to, uh, I'm gonna introduce you to some new products and hopefully some new meal ideas. So let's go. pumpkin season y'all here we go okay produce all right you guys my favorite part of the store the main thing when buying produce the most important thing that I want you guys to recognize is color look how colorful the produce department is so your goal when you're shopping is to look for the rainbow when you buy produce. And I'm going to show you guys all different kinds of produce and why I pick certain things. So this is like the pre-packaged produce section and it is awesome because um, if you're in a pinch or you don't have time to prep that week, you can always pre-buy some stuff like this um, cauliflower broccoli mix or the asparagus saute, great for sauteing or you can throw them in a roasting pan and roast them really easily. I love coleslaw mixes, potatoes, butternut squash. These are all things that you can roast really easily and then just keep them in your fridge and you can add them to pre-prepped proteins or grains. Same with these. I even love these like stir fry kits, but I don't like love the sauces in them. I just don't like the way they taste really. So I use my own sauce and I'll show you condiments later on. Look, they have Brussels sprouts. Some people have the shaved Brussels sprouts, which is awesome. Okay. Look for the colors. Look at this. There's orange, red. Um, I love mushrooms. I put mushrooms in a lot of things, but it's not necessary. Fresh herbs are awesome. You can always add fresh herbs to anything. Um, like when you're cooking or afterwards, I love dill, mint, basil. Really easy to add to stuff fresh delicious flavor um, one thing I really love is cauliflower you can always cut that up you can rice it oh my gosh is there anything you can't do with cauliflower really so um, over here on this wall I love peppers peppers are a really easy way to add color to your rainbow at any given time I also love zucchini zucchini roasts pretty well so it is yellow squash I like cucumbers for snacks the cool thing about Whole Foods is they actually have fresh turmeric, so you can either juice that or add it to a smoothie. They always have ginger, that's jicama. Looks like they have burdock, or no, this is horseradish. Horseradish. Um, fresh green beans are awesome, easy to roast or add to a saute anytime. Okay, so here we have lettuces. So you can always buy, obviously, lettuce by the head. Um, one thing to think about, again, if we're looking at colors, like what are the color of the lettuces available? So there's like this red lettuce that actually has purple at the tips, or like this guy down here is purple. Um, and then, you know, there's always pre-packaged lettuces in the box, which I love. I always buy those too. So over here are kind of like our cruciferous greens, right? So kales, collards. Um, I always like these too. You can add them to salads. Again, there's a purple, right? doesn't always have to be just plain green um, and then down here is like some cool things radishes radicchio daikon beets awesome color look how cool these french radishes are these beautiful rainbow radishes <laughs> um, celery roots celery all the veggies even with carrots I like to look for ones that have color so I'll buy like the rainbow carrots instead of the regular carrots because we're getting more color in. More color is more nutrients overall. So that's why we like the rainbow. Here's one of Beth and I's favorite veggies. Hello. This one's conventional. It's Romanesco, which is it's like a kind of cauliflower, but look at that cool design. Okay, so already I'm sure that you guys have seen vegetables that you're not familiar with or you probably haven't bought before. I don't want you to feel overwhelmed like, oh, I have to come to the grocery store and buy all these vegetables I've never seen before. What I want you to do is once, a, like every time you shop, which ideally is once a week, 
is to pick one thing that you haven't tried before and try it out. So that is this side of produce. Most grocery stores always put things that are seasonal up front. Um, right now, we saw the pumpkins already. They have grapes. Uh, but mostly, right now, it's um, November. So there's cranberries, as you can see, but also all the apples. It is apple season hardcore. Look at these beautiful apples. I love apples for snacks. You can also stew them. You can make an apple crumble that's clean and delicious for a snack or dessert. And then here are all of the greens, okay? So we love these greens. Every grocery store has these types of greens, right? Either in a box or in a bag. And so um, I like to have them on hand. I can just grab a handful, add them to tacos, like breakfast tacos, regular tacos. I can put them on sandwiches. I actually just recently bought these butter um, lettuces. They're great, like cups. So you can, um, you know, put like chicken salad or bean salad in there. And it's a really simple, easy lunch. I even did a uh, like a ham and cheese wrap, and then I wrapped it in the lettuce. So that was really good too. Okay, so there are these dressings. You guys, for dressings, I am just an oil and vinegar person. Um, but my main thing with dressings is just to always read the ingredients. So, for example, we're gonna look at this organic girl. So. This actually is great. If you notice that the fat, it is actually extra virgin olive oil, um, which is awesome. A lot of dressings that are pre-packaged are typically um, canola oil. So I don't know if, or this one, I don't know if you can see very well, but that says soybean oil. So I don't know. I mean, if I'm out at a restaurant, obviously I don't have control over these things. So if I'm at home, if I'm buying it for myself, um, I like to go as clean as I can afford. So just think about that. Um, what I love about Whole Foods and some other grocery stores these days is they have these like fermented sections, right? I love this kimchi. It's pretty tasty. Pickles are awesome. Ask me about kimchi or if you need to know how to use that kind of stuff. Um, so over here is like the seasonal, more seasonal stuff, right? These are the winter squash. This is butternut squash, spaghetti squash. Not totally sure what these are over here. I think they're kabocha. Yeah, these are the kabocha squashes. And then we've got acorn squashes. These are the little pumpkin pie pumpkins. So these are awesome for roasting. They go really well with meatballs, sausage, shredded chicken, whatever you guys can think of. Um, even on their own, even for breakfast. I'm serious. These beautiful pears and pomegranates. So oranges. Citrus is about to be in season. That's kind of like a December, January fruit. But I love citrus. And then onions and potatoes. So potatoes, just like the um, winter squash and the potatoes, particularly we like the um, Japanese. These are the Japanese sweet potatoes. So these are purplish on the outside and then they're white on the inside and they have a lot of prebiotic fiber. So these actually help feed your good gut bacteria, which is awesome. And there's other purple potatoes. Those are actually purple on the inside. Sweet potatoes are awesome. You could get all three, dice them up, and have a gorgeous sweet potato roast. Oh my god, everybody will be like, wow. Okay, we're going to go over here to bulk. A lot of people are kind of intimidated by the bulk section. This is where I love to get all of my spices. <laughs> so... One of my favorite spices is smoked paprika. Um, I also, taco seasoning is a must in our house. Um, let's see, turmeric is a must, it's really easy to use. Garam masala is a great spice to use. Not getting it, here it is, garam masala. Uh, curry powder, cumin, even dill. Cinnamon is awesome. Celery, Chili is also awesome. So, you know, again, if you're not familiar with spices, ask, or you can always just start by trying one. The best way to try it is to sprinkle a little on your favorite, like, protein, or add to beans, or add to a vegetable, um, saute or roast it with a little bit of oil, see how you like it. Smell it first. If you smell it and you don't think it tastes good, then don't buy it. I'm just stopping here because I just walked past this and I was like, what are those things? And they're chocolate chips. <laughs> 
in with the peanuts. This is a chocolate peanut butter. Holy moly. Anyway, got distracted. Okay, so I also love bulk for things like this. You might be like, isn't dried fruit fruit? I'm only supposed to have like one or two fruit servings a day, which is true. But you know what? These can these can really add a lot. You can make oatmeal muffins or cookies or just add them to oatmeal or like rice cereal or nut rice cereal, whatever kind of um, like whole grain that you're using. These are really helpful um, to add a little bit of flavor. I also love dates. There's lots of recipes, you know, with raw desserts that call for dates. So um, the bulk section is the best place to buy this stuff. You guys, you can get spices. The spices, you know, in the jar cost probably like three, four dollars a jar. And if you buy them in bulk, you can get it for like 50 cents. So that's a huge, huge win. Um, and then it's not as big of an investment. You can try other things. I love the nuts and the seeds in the bulk department. Uh, mostly because, again, they come in different flavors. You can try new things. Um, add nuts to salads, add nuts to oatmeal, snack on nuts on their own. These are all good ideas. You can also try grains in bulk because um, sometimes the bags are like 6 to $8. So if you want to try something new you haven't tried before, that's great. Whole dried beans are awesome. They're super cheap, um, just in general, but in bulk even cheaper. I really like these yellow split peas. Um, sometimes they have red lentils, which I may have passed already. Um, but beautiful bulk section. Don't be afraid of bulk. Okay. So we're going to talk about proteins. Um, we're walking towards the protein department. And so... Here's what I want to point out. You should always read the labels when you're looking at meat. At Whole Foods, it's awesome because you'll see that number in the top right corner. And that correlates with their five-step animal welfare rating. So you can see here how they grade all of their protein. I generally try to go two or above, but quite frankly, their step one is better than most protein at a conventional grocery store. So you really can't go wrong. But what I do want to show you um, here is something that's kind of cool. And I hope that it will show up on camera. Um, maybe not, but you'll see. Actually, here we go. So you can kind of see, like, here's... Uh, level two chicken with skin on it and here's level four the level four looks a little yellow which I can see how that might like gross some people out but the reason why it has that yellow in it is because it's actually been eating the diet that it was intended to eat like bugs and so it's created more vitamin A so um, yeah we're just looking so um, it creates more vitamin A, which makes this skin look yellow. So don't be grossed out. It's not old. It's not bad. It actually just has more nutrients. So the level four, and look at that. This one's on sale, which is pretty awesome. You can't go wrong with a whole chicken. Something else I want you guys to notice is it will always tell you, like, where it's from on a meat label. It has to tell you if it's from the United States. Sometimes it'll actually tell you which state. Um, you can always look for things like pasture-raised or grass fed so let's see like here this says pasture raised um, I know over here over there it says grass fed so something to look for again the, the biggest thing is when you're shopping at a, a traditional grocery store um, they always have to put ingredients so if it's something like this like a, a marinated item it will always have the ingredients on there and I want you guys to be really uh, aware of this because at a traditional grocery store they tend to put a lot of weird stuff in there so as a general rule of thumb we want to avoid numbers and acronyms when we're shopping for food specifically any packaged product so that brings me over here to the packaged proteins. Excuse me, I have the hiccups. <laughs> so packaged proteins get a bad rap, um, especially if you have watched certain documentaries out there that talk about um, how terrible meat is. And what I, what I want to tell you is um, what you want to look for always is no nitrates or no nitrates added, uncured, okay? If you go to a grocery store or even like a gas station and you buy meat, generally has nitrates in it. That is what is 
causing cancer for most meat consumption. That and not eating enough vegetables. So if you're only eating meat, then that's not good. But really anything in abundance, um, you know, if you're only eating, if you're eating an unbalanced diet and you're only eating a specific food type, quite frankly, that's not good for you no matter what it is. So if you do like protein, animal protein, just be sure that you're going for no nitrates added. Okay. Ideally organic, ideally grass fed or pasture raised. All, you know, the more that the cleaner the better you can get it from your local farm even better uh so don't be afraid of this stuff it's just in moderation right same with this stuff it is more expensive right this is all going to be a little bit more expensive than your traditional uh grocery store meat uh 365 has one no nitrates added so that's always an option right honestly i don't usually buy a lot of the frozen proteins but for people who are really really busy or you know are planning the week ahead things like these pre-made chicken meatballs are an awesome way to go you can't go wrong um i know beth uses some of these applegate sausages for breakfast again anytime it, it comes to a pre-packaged food especially a protein you want to read ingredients and know what's in there so we're going to uh, hop through wine. We're not going to talk about wine today, but I do want to talk about seafood. So the most important thing for you guys to know about seafood is read the labels. Um, I'm going to go over here to the fish. There are people here. So. Okay, so when it comes to fish, the label will always tell you if it's been previously frozen or if it's fresh. It will always tell you if it's wild or if it's been farm raised. Over there on the bottom, it will tell you where it's from, Peru, USA. Um, in this case, it says local. This is either, oh, that says LA, so I guess Louisiana. So these are really important labels. I prefer fresh wild caught. And you can always ask these guys. Am I in trouble? No, okay. No. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, good. Okay, so one of my favorite things to look for um, when I'm looking at fish, this is beautiful fish, is um, I can tell things that are fresh versus frozen. Usually, obviously, the sign will tell me, but I like to use my eyes when I shop for fish. I like to look for that kind of nice, glossy texture. Like, I just noticed this red snapper is beautiful. It's very glossy. Um, Chilean sea bass is a really nice fish, but it's kind of like matte. It's been previously frozen, so I just don't know if it's worth, you know, the extra $3 a pound. Obviously, these are both pretty expensive fish. Um, per person, I go with four, three to four ounces. That's really all you need. Sometimes the seafood guys are like, go with half a pound per person. That's maybe for shrimp, but not for fish, especially if you're going to have sides and things with it. So... Always look at the labels. Same for shrimp, especially shellfish. I definitely want to know where it's from. I don't really love Asian shrimp because their practices are not great. Whole Foods generally doesn't sell that. Um, I actually talked to the people at HEB recently and they said they have a guy who specially procures their Asian shrimp so that they know what's going on. So that was good to hear. But I can't be sure, um, you know, as far as like Kroger or Aldi or whatever, um, if they do that kind of quality control. So when we're talking about fish, I also like to talk about these smoked salmons. There's like the cold smoked, which are these like more firm ones, right? Or I'm sorry, like heat smoked. And then there's like these cured ones, um, which are also delicious. So these are good for breakfast. You can add them to salads. You can have them as a snack. Um, I've never tried the mackerel. I'm not brave enough to try that, but I have tried the trout. I don't see the trout, but it's actually really good. So if you like fish, I would recommend mixing it up, maybe adding some of those. I'm sorry we're not talking about wine today. I know you want to. <laughs> These are the best crackers. They're a million dollars, but, um, you know, for a party or something, maybe. We're not really going to talk about cheese on this tour, um, cheese does count as a protein 
That's all I'm going to say about cheese right now. Obviously, get the best that you can. Organic is always better. Grass-fed is always better. Um, don't eat too much cheese, but if you can tolerate it, um, it can definitely be used as a protein. They have this awesome bread cheese um, or halloumi, which is great. I know Beth sometimes does like beans and veggies sauteed or uh, roasted, and then she might chop up a little bit of this, and, and that'll be like the family's protein for the for the meal. Um, which is very, very few and far between, but it's an awesome idea, and the kids obviously go bonkers over it. But they don't get cheese most of the other time, so it's a special treat. Again, all these, like, uh, packaged meats like prosciutto, salami, obviously delicious, but you always want to look for uncured, no nitrates ever. Nitrates are literally, scientifically proven linked to cancer, so that's why we avoid those. Um, also these are super salty, so you don't want these to be like your main source of protein just because you're going to be getting a ton of sodium from them. But as a component, I don't see why, why not? Here's some fun stuff. There's like, um, fresh salsas. These are mostly cheese spreads, um, and the more cheese stuff. But what I do love here is they have some fresh basils. Basil is one of my dearest friends, or I'm sorry, pestos. And there's some places that have like vegan pestos. Uh, I know there's a vegan pesto here somewhere. We're at Whole Foods after all. Um, pesto is awesome. So I like to do pesto. You can either pre-roast all of your veggies, pre-cook your protein, and then when you reheat it, thin out a little bit of this pesto. If you see how thick it is, right, it's pretty thick take a scoop like a tablespoon and then mix that in with a little bit of like um, broth um, or if you're feeling really fancy almond milk or cream thin it out a little bit and then just toss your pre-cooked protein and veggies in there and uh, you have dinner in like five minutes and it's delicious same with salsa and we'll talk more about condiments in a second this is one of my favorite things this is like a splurge sometimes for me I love olives Salads, quite frankly, kind of bore me. So things like adding olives, these like roasted tomatoes. Back there, I don't know if you can see, but they have pickled okra. There's all kinds of fun things. There's like the artichokes. They even have pickled cauliflower. That kind of stuff goes a long way in a salad. It's really, really good. All right, we're going to talk about dairy, and then we're going to hit the aisles. So... Sorry, this is real time, people. There's people around me and trying to avoid them. Okay, so when it comes to dairy, first of all, we never push dairy on anyone. It's not really like necessary by any means, but some people um, can tolerate it and enjoy it, so it's not terrible. But uh, what we do like is like looking for these local brands. Like we have Milk King here in Austin, which is great. Um, here's more Milk King. Something to note is also reading the labels when it comes to milk. So I'm going to show you a label here that says um, Promised Land. It says homogenized. And I'm looking for the pasteurization stamp here. Oh, that's weird. It's not telling me. Well, we're going to have to look at something here. So even the 365 brand says just pasteurized. Okay. But over here... This, which looks seemingly great, right? It says 100% grass-fed, but then over at the bottom, um, I don't know if I can zoom in here, but it says ultra-pasteurized. So something that's been ultra-pasteurized has basically been heated to the point where you cannot have any um, bacteria at all, um, or enzymes pretty much. So not only is it not really doing you any favors, Beth is convinced it tastes different. I don't really know. Um, but it's actually, these are shelf stable. Any, any dairy product that is ultra pasteurized is shelf stable. We only put it in the fridge because, um, us Americans are always a little weirded out by things that aren't in the fridge. Um, but if you were to see an ultra pasteurized product in Mexico, Costa Rica, even Canada, you would find it on the shelf, not refrigerated. So these are actually ultra pasteurized. There's no reason to not buy it. I mean, I guess if you're going to eat milk, it's not the end of the world, but again, we would prefer, sorry, <laughs> We would prefer, um, you know, maybe ideally something grass-fed, just regular pasteurized is fine. And even the milk, the Milk King is pretty cool because it says low temp pasteurized. 
So that means it's been pasteurized enough to make sure that you're not going to um, ideally get sick from this type of milk, but it still probably has some enzymes and bacteria in here that's good for you. So that's cool. But again, we're not promoting milk to everybody. If you can't do milk, that's fine. That's why we have these wonderful almond milks. Beth and I um, pretty much do almond milk. There's a wonderful clean brand that we like called Malk, which is actually on sale. So Malk is like if you were to actually make the milk yourself. It's just like water and nuts. And you can always read the ingredients. Some of these, pretty much every other almond milk has binders or gums, which helps with the texture, um, the smoothness. I know some people are like, oh, I tried almond milk once. It was terrible. You guys, there's tons of brands of almond milk. I actually kind of like the Blue Diamond. I like the Califia. I mix it up, though. I don't typically do soy milk. Flax milk's okay. The one thing we want to do is just avoid the, the carrageenan, which actually is a derivative of seaweed, but it's so processed now that there have been some interesting studies that just show it has some adverse effects. So that's the one thing I try to avoid. And a lot of the almond companies or, you know, alternative milk companies are kind of on board with this. So most of them don't have that anymore. But if you are at like a mainstream store, definitely check that out. Read the back. Always read the ingredients. Some people like to ask about these like drinkable yogurts. When it comes to yogurt, the one thing I want you guys to think about is sugar content. Whether you're doing a, um, you know, almond milk yogurt, soy milk yogurt, or traditional milk yogurt, we're always looking at sugar content. And one way to kind of parse out um, what is the sugar content of my yogurt is to start with a plain. I can find a plain. Um, I don't want to look at that. So here's the 4% plain ciggies. So you'll see the sugar content is only 5 grams per serving. I like Siggy's because if you look at this here, it says whole milk, cream, cultures. That's awesome. Um, and so then if I look at a Siggy's non-plain, I'm going to put that one back. I'm going to grab one of the fruit ones. And this has 8 grams of sugar. 8 grams of sugar here. So I know that 5 of it comes from milk and 3 of it's from cane sugar and fruit pectin. Well, fruit, not fruit pectin. So that's actually, I mean, that's not that much sugar. That's less than a teaspoon of sugar. So that's why we like Siggy's. Um, they're generally low as sugar as far as yogurt goes. This looks like a new flavor. I just want to look at it. Mm, banana and cinnamon. I also like to go for the higher fat ones, like 2% plus, because the 0% actually has more natural sugars. Which So this one has 6 grams of natural sugar for a plain. Oh, I'm sorry, 4 grams. Maybe I... Well, forget that. Scratch it. I actually do know that Beth buys a 0% for her daughter, who previously had a dairy food sensitivity and she's been really healing her gut and now because zero percent actually has less whey her daughter can tolerate zero percent more than the fattier ones but mostly when it comes to um, someone who is tolerating dairy I like the fattier ones because they are more satiating in general so if you are one of those people that's like oh I just have a yogurt for breakfast which I don't recommend uh, but if you're doing the full fat one it will hold you over a little bit longer So, juice, we generally avoid juice. It's not really like a thing that you need, but I will say that um, you can always do like an ounce or two of juice and mix it with water. So if you're like one of those people that um, does not love water, which don't tell us that because water is so important, you guys. But, um, you know, even like a little, like, like a dash of cranberry in your water or something, if, it, if that's going to help you drink more water, more power to you. Just make sure that you are conscious of the sugar that you are consuming. Okay, we're gonna go back this way. We're gonna hit some aisles. I'm gonna try not to run anybody over here. Can you guys hear me okay? Just like type yes if you can hear me. Okay, so here are the bottled spices, you guys. The bottled spices, look at that. Four, three fifty, four dollars for spices. Your 
you're much better going off with bulk. These are, you know, these are still cheap, but you could probably get the exact same amount in bulk for 50 cents. So um, you can buy these glass containers at Bed Bath & Beyond or probably on Amazon really easily. And then just organize, get organized. Alternative sugars. I don't usually talk about this a whole lot with clients unless they ask me. Um, there are some alternatives. This actually looks pretty cool. Date sugar. Sugar is sugar, though, you guys. Um, you can't cheat your way out of it. One teaspoon is three grams of sugar. But I want to show you something. Uh, traditional sugar has four grams. So I don't know. Honestly, I'd rather just have a teaspoon of this than whatever you know that is. But maybe it's a little bit less glycemic. I don't really think it is. So... This probably just tastes good. Anyway, just be conscious about your sugar. Yes, there are things like monk fruit sweetener and stevia. Um, in very little moderation, you guys. Sugar is sugar. I don't care if it has zero grams or 100 grams. It's legal drugs. We all love it. Um, even maple syrup and honey. Love it. It's still sugar. So... We just have to, we use them to add flavor. We use them to add a little sweetness. A little sweetness in our life is um, actually even Ayurvedically important. So we can't ban sugar completely. It's okay to have a little bit. Don't go nuts. Teas. I love tea. Again, for people who uh, are like on the I don't love water scale, I love things like a hibiscus tea or they make like blueberry tea. Like they have all these like flavors. You can add them to water, chill them, whatever you need to do. Um, the herbal teas are awesome too. So we're not going to talk about cookies. But what I will say is just always read your ingredients on anything that is a processed food. Read the ingredients. Chocolate. Okay, Beth and I do like chocolate. I do, I do think that... A lot of us do have sweet cravings, and I don't think we should deny them all the time. That leads to a boring life. Um, but that said, that doesn't mean we should indulge in cake and cookies every day. So, um, you know, get a bar of dark chocolate and just snip off one or two pieces. You know, and then every once in a while you can uh, do more than that. But if you're a sugar monster, for one, you need to be eating food during the day. A lot of us have food cravings because we're not eating enough food during the day. And then we get to nighttime and we're starving. So that's part of it. I'm going to squeeze through here. I want to talk about some alternatives and introduce you guys to some new products. Maybe not new. New to you. Sometimes they're new to me. When I'm browsing, I just get to find new things. One thing I love are these bonitos. I like the white ones. Corn, generally, we actually meet a lot of people with corn sensitivities. So that being, there is corn in a lot of processed foods. So try to avoid corn sometimes. But the bonitos, the cool thing about bonitos is, one, these ingredients are pretty pure. And then they have five grams of protein. Five grams of protein and a bag of chips, um, you know, or per serving. So especially if you are vegan or vegetarian and you need sources of protein, you can even look at some of these like crackers and chips that are made with lentils and things like that. Or if you're paleo, I guess you could try these pork rinds. I've tried them. I think they're gross, but everybody's different. <laughs> Again, it's about ingredients. If you were to like look at pork rinds at 7-Eleven, they would have nitrates and MSG and all kinds of weird gross stuff in there. So that would not be appropriate. The cereal aisle. Literally everybody asked me about the cereal aisle. I had no idea what like cereal addicts we were, but I do know that I was raised on cereal, so it, I guess it totally makes sense. And I only stopped really eating cereal pretty recently. I'll still buy some as like a treat or a snack, um, but if I were to start my day with just cereal, I would be starving in like an hour. So um, that said, if you guys are cereal people, there's some really cool alternative cereals. Um, I know we just talked about corn, but this is purple corn, and it's organic. This brand of kids' cereals is made from beans, which is pretty cool. Navy beans, lentil beans, garbanzo beans, so it actually has some protein in it. Just in general, you know, I don't know about cereal. 
cool things that we like. Obviously, granola is kind of fun. You can put granola on your yogurt or maybe with your stewed apples or stewed pears. That would be delicious. Um, and then here's a product that I talk about a lot. You know, I used to love it. I'm kind of over it right now, but I still want to share it with you. So that Wild Way cereal is actually just made from nuts. Um, I, I, this is where I definitely like to put granola on it. I like to add the dried fruit, crunchy nuts, whatever it takes, because it's kind of just like eating mush. But it has so much protein and high quality fat that it keeps you full all morning. So I really love that. And then of course oatmeal. Generally, so the difference with like quick oats have already basically been kind of run through the ringer per se. So they have a little bit less fiber than traditional, say old fashioned oats. They don't take that much longer to cook, quite honestly. Instant just means like you can microwave it probably. Um, so yeah, go for the ones with more fiber. If you want a ton of fiber, go for the steel cut. Okay, well yeah, more juice, more almond milk, more juice. This looks kind of delicious. Macadamia nut milk. I'm just going to read the ingredients. Eh. A lot of people like to avoid xanthan gum. Xanthan gum, I think, can have gluten in it. So if you're gluten-free, that might be something to avoid. Look at this macadamia nut milk, though. So this macadamia milk, macadamia nut milk, <laughs> actually has some pea protein in there. There's always gums in these things. So it really just depends on your digestive system and what you can handle and what you can't. Obviously, you don't want to load up your body with gums and things, but I don't know, that looks delicious. It's all about, you know, balancing out some of these processed foods with whole fresh foods. So when you go to produce, I want like 50% of your produce to come, or 50% of your groceries to be produce. At least. Crackers. I like Whole Foods because they have organic wheat crackers. Organic wheat is definitely the type of wheat you would want to eat versus traditional wheat. I love that they have this brand Simple Mills. Um, it is certified organic, or actually, well, so this is interesting. It looks like it should be organic, right? But it just says non-GMO, gluten-free. It doesn't say organic. Well, that's your choice to make, but these ingredients they have some organic stuff in it. I love these anyway. You know, you gotta choose your battles. There's no such thing as perfect, but these are pretty delicious anyway. But they are very expensive, so I don't buy them very often. Quite frankly, I buy nut thins or those organic crackers. I just love crackers because they're vehicles that can make veggie dips, um, you know, good snacks. Salmon, I mean, not, yeah, salmon and tuna. Again, Whole Foods does a good job of sourcing things that are like eco-ish friendly, so I don't think you can go wrong here uh, with their salmon or tuna or sardines. Somebody was asking me about sardines, and I was like, "Yeah, if you love, if you like these, go for it. Sardines have so many good things in there for you. Tons of omega threes. I don't know. I always just like to have a can of tuna on hand because I know I can have a quick protein if I need. Here's more olives. These are surprisingly same price if not more expensive than the ones from the bar and let's talk about condiments this is my favorite part so when it comes to mayonnaise I want you to read ingredients of course so this says it's made with expeller pressed canola oil and we're gonna look at these ingredients I mean, it's not too bad, but we don't love canola oil, okay? Like, if I have control over the oils that I'm going to put in my body, I'm not going to choose canola oil. I'll then go for something that actually has avocado oil in it. And if you, next time you go to the grocery store, if you go to, like, a mainstream grocery store, I want you to read the ingredients in your mayonnaise. Hellman's, I don't know about anymore. I mean, I was raised on that, right? But, um... It's not like I'm eating a ton of mayonnaise, so even though it's $8, I 
which I think you can find on Thrive for a lot cheaper, maybe on Amazon for cheaper. But, um, you know, this is something that you get control over. It's all clean ingredients. Why not? Um, even like this one, the Kensington is really clean. I love mustard. Dijon is one of my favorite condiments, okay? So one thing that you can do with Dijon is let's say you have pre-made shredded chicken um, in the crock pot for the week and you have stored shredded chicken in the fridge or even like white beans in a can. All you have to do is put your protein in a saute pan with a little bit of broth and like a tablespoon of Dijon and saute it. And if you want, you can add fresh herbs like dill, or um, even like chopped up tarragon, and that would go so good. And then you just serve it with your, your roasted veggies or salad that you have on hand. So easy, clean, flavorful. Here's another condiment that Beth and I just go bonkers for. Uh, so this stuff is Harissa, it's a red pepper sauce. It's really clean. This also goes amazing. If you make your own bean dip, like a white bean dip with this, it's delicious. You can add this to proteins, put it on veggies, do the exact same technique where you thin it out with a little bit of broth, put your protein in there. So good. Then we obviously have things like barbecue sauce, which are fine. Um, you know, they, sometimes they have more sugar than I would like to see in them. Um, but if it's like under five grams and you're only eating a little bit of it, that's okay. Just read the ingredients, do the best that you can. We're avoiding numbers and acronyms. <laughs> that's the main thing that we're looking for. Um, here's more dressings. I actually do like the Braggs. Braggs is really clean. Um, they use extra virgin olive oil, so that would be an option. Another dressing that I really like is the Primal Kitchen because they use avocado oil. I have the Caesar one at home. It's really good. Or no, I have the Greek one. The Greek one's really good. I haven't tried any of the others. This one looks pretty good. If you're interested in like a creamy dressing. I don't know if you can read that, but it looks pretty good. Um, and then over here, beans. I love beans. If you can find Eden brand, we love Eden brand because they cook all of their beans with kombu. So kombu is a particular seaweed and it offers like nutrients, trace minerals, but also enzymes that help break down the gas from when you eat them. But any bean is fine and I always rinse it. Some people like to save the goo from the garbanzo beans, which is a whole other video. Um, but yeah, so rinse really well and then all you have to do is heat them up. Super easy. Um, you can make chili with beans, with protein, put a ton of veggies in there. I also like, um, always, I always have broth on hand. It's so funny, one of my clients was like, I feel like you talk like about broth like a lot. <laughs> um, and that might be true because I like it. And um, I always read the ingredients. I will say, I don't love the term chicken flavor. I have no idea what that means, you guys. Um, and so I would almost rather, oh, this one here, this is the one. It tells you exactly what's in it, except for spices. Spices can also be innocuous, right? Like if you have a food sensitivity to like black pepper or cumin and you see the word spices, or even if you are severely allergic to like MSG, spices is not your friend. So you might want to consider making your own broth. Um, there are some really clean broths, obviously like these, super expense. You can probably order some of those online um, or make your own really, really easily. But I just always love to have broth on hand. The grocery store is getting busy. All right, so we're going to go through just a couple more aisles really quick here. Tomato sauce. I always have tomato sauce on hand. We've already talked about pesto. There's this tomato pesto. Even sun-dried tomatoes, garlic. These are all flavor enhancers, you guys. Don't be afraid of them. Just even this pesto. I'm pretty sure it's clean, cleanish. Um, still haven't found that vegan pesto. We're gonna keep our eyes out for it. But look, they have these cool like vegan cream sauces and things. My favorite tomato sauce, which you're gonna think is weird, is actually this pizza sauce. 
I love this brand. I think it tastes so good. But, you know, sometimes I just buy this brand. That's fine, too. Read ingredients. Look for sugar. But, you know, I like to do sautés with protein or, be like, meat protein or beans and tons of veggies with marinara. And then serve that with rice or pasta or something. It's so good, you guys. And then behind me is all of the taco things, right? Um, not all of these are created equal. That's for sure. Some of these are kind of, eh. But honestly, these skillet sauces are okay. Always read the ingredients. But I always have some kind of taco seasoning on hand. I like these like fajita seasonings too. These are summer sauces. And they're organic. Even like this uh, roasted green chili, you could put a bunch of beans and some broth or chicken and broth or pork and broth and a bottle of this into a crock pot and then you would have just like this delicious stew. You could add potatoes and onions and then serve it with a big like slaw. Oh my god, that'd be so good. Even these Tasty Bite things are actually really clean. Um, so like in a pinch, if you need some kind of like lentil dish, great for vegans. You get tired of them after a while, but you know what? If you add like a fresh side salad or some kind of fresh roasted veggie on the side, done. So easy. Here's those delicious harissa blends again. Oh my God, they're so good. Keep your eyes out. Sometimes there's some new things. When I look at Asian stuff, okay. It's my favorite part of the grocery store. I always have toasted sesame oil on hand. I always have rice vinegar on hand. I always have, I prefer the shoyu, it's organic shoyu. You can do the 365 brand. There's other brands, or if you want to do tamari, or if you can't have that, then there's the coconut amino acids. These also look really good. Those three things combined make anything taste deliciously Asian. There's always ginger to add to that. I love these Korean sauces. Um, again, don't feel overwhelmed like, oh my gosh, I have to buy all of these condiments at once. Just pick one flavor for the week to try. So if you're going to do a stir fry this week, then yes, you need your sesame oil, rice wine vinegar, and some kind of salty sauce to go with it. And then if you like it spicy, add a chili sauce to it. Okay. Um, another thing to look for is some of these like cleaner hoisin sauces. You're never going to find that at like an H-E-B or a Kroger or whatever. You have to go to a Whole Foods or your health food store to find some of these clean Asian sauces. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. These are good, too. They have some clean like Thai Yeah, Indian, Thai, Korean, Chinese, Japanese, you can't go wrong. Okay, back to pastas, we already talked about tomato sauces. So there's obviously our regular pasta. I usually wanna go for an organic wheat pasta. Um, if I'm gonna do wheat, I try to go for organic and or I'm gonna look at the origin. So I'm looking for, so this was manufactured in Italy, which is a good sign. Um, I generally like Italian pasta because their wheat is just different. Um, but what I generally do if I have pasta is I'm looking for these alternative brands, right? Sorry. So... I generally want to look at ingredients first before I even look at um, nutrition facts because you want to know like okay so if I'm looking at this pasta it's just red lentil flour so I know that these carbs are coming from lentil the sugar is coming from lentil the proteins coming from lentil but if I saw oh, it's 21 grams of sugar and then there was high fructose corn syrup in it I'd know where the sugar is coming from so Again, we don't pay, I pay more ingredient, more attention to ingredients versus nutrition facts, but they are both helpful, okay? But yeah, you can try all these other ones, um, but yeah, I always look for protein and fiber when it comes to these alternative pastas. And if you like a gluten-free pasta, there's plenty to try. Um, I actually do like these spirals down here. It's funny, when it comes to alternative pastas, I like spirals because I feel like they hold up better 
sometimes if you've tried a like flat spaghetti pasta or something they just kind of like get mushy so just be careful but give it a try um, and then of course there's all of these other like Thai noodles soba noodles soba noodles and Thai noodles are typically made from rice which is awesome and then what comes with rice first of all I love this Lotus food brand they have the coolest rice options this forbidden rice is purple it's kind of sweet um, they have this, like, beautiful pink rice. Okay. And then um, this is also really good, too. This is, like, a jade pearl rice. What if you bought, like, all three, cooked them separate, and made some kind of, like, trio? You would have rainbow rice. That would be amazing. Please do that. Usually, I just buy this rice, quite frankly. And the reason why we like we like it's organic, it's from California... Some of these other places, their, their farmland was previously like cotton fields or peanut fields, and they had a ton of pesticides on them. And so we know that this brand has got this clean organic. Oh, yeah. Let's talk about oils and vinegars. I love a good flavored vinegar, like this sweet fig or cherry. But, you know, that, that's not a lot of flavor to things. I also just always have, like, a red wine vinegar lying around. And I always have apple cider vinegar. I'm not one of those people that can drink apple cider vinegar, by the way. More power to you. <laughs> but I can't do that. Um, okay, so oils. I generally cook with avocado oil. This brand over here makes beautiful oils, if you can find them. Um, but other oils that are fine that you can use, especially for high heat cooking, is like grapeseed, safflower, sunflower. So any of these would be okay. Avocado is better. I generally try to avoid canola. I don't love canola. So there's two kinds of sesame seed oil. The toasted has a lot of flavor. It's delicious. And then the regular is um, just kind of a bland, nice oil. I prefer to finish with things like sesame oil or walnut oil or even olive oil because they have lower smoke points. I don't, I mean, olive oil is hard to burn, but you can burn it. And so when you burn oils, it turns into trans fats. You do not want that. We do like coconut oil, but the thing about that is it does have antibacterial properties. And so if you're only cooking with coconut oil, over time, you could actually be, like, killing off a lot of good bacteria in your gut. So, rotate your oils. I also can't tell you how much I love flavored oils, which, unfortunately, Whole Foods really doesn't have. Um, but, like, this roasted garlic oil, you can find, um, oh, over here they have lemon oil, basil oil. And I will tell you, if you toss your vegetables in one of these flavored oils with salt and roast it at about 300 um, for 30 to 45 minutes, people are going to ask you what you did to make these vegetables taste so good. So I love oils. Can't get enough. I'm sorry if I'm making you dizzy. I'm trying to avoid filming people and getting run over at the same time. Okay, so... Oh, wait, you know what we need to talk about is butter. I'm going to go back over here really quick. Oh, oh, butter moved. Okay, so butter is also kind of like dairy, right? There's signs that say pasture-raised. There's also signs that say grass-fed, which um, you'll see the carry gold. That's grass-fed. I like those brands. Um, so, yeah, if you can tolerate dairy and you know you want to alternate your fats you can alternate between butter and oil but I generally like um, the pasteurized or the grass fed they also make goat butter so if you're like you can have dairy but you can't have cow dairy you can always try goat butter side note these are delicious aren't they the cutest things they're little like french puddings they have clean ingredients. It's still it's still dessert, obviously. Something I really love, this is actually my favorite vegan cheese on the planet, is this Kite Hill chive. 
I don't recommend the regular. I don't know why, but the chive one is delicious. It even melts well. You can toss that with like something hot. So good. I generally don't do these um, meat alternatives, but what we do recommend if you are vegan is to look for things that are more whole. So like tempeh is actually the use of the whole soybean that has been fermented. So there's a lot of goodness in tempeh. Um, so tempeh would be like a more often kind of soy product. Tofu, I always wanna look for the sprouted tofu. I noticed that they have these like flavored ones which are actually like, kind of delicious. We also really love miso. Miso is amazing, you guys. So you can buy a miso, you just put like a teaspoon or a tablespoon in with your broth and you can always add veggies, noodles, meat, whatever you want to it and it's just so nourishing and especially if you're open to having like a veggie soup in the morning with miso, I can't tell you how good that is for you eggs. I generally always look for pasture raised eggs. It kind of, remember I showed you the chicken when we first started, the chicken had yellow skin. These yolks are going to be orange because of the same thing. The chicken had a chance to like eat bugs. Um, there's a few brands that are pasture raised. Even this, um, Whole Foods is pasture raised. Um, coming back to some of this stuff, like the tofurkeys and the wheat roast, a lot of them are gluten-based, flour-based. So if you can't do gluten and you're vegan, then these are kind of off limits, and I would focus more on some of the frozen bean patties, which I will show you in a second. We're almost done, you guys. Okay, so we're going to scroll through nut butters. Nut butters are life. Awesome for snacking. Always read the ingredients. I generally try to avo avoid palm oil if I can, but you know, sometimes it doesn't happen. So just do the best that you can. Try not to buy the super sugary ones. When it comes to bread, by the way, um, everyone's like, what's a healthy bread? <sighs> you know, I mean, something like this is okay, but a lot of people have like, a sensitivity to at least some kind of grain and some of these like 21 grains that's 21 grains that your body has to know how to process so or seeds like 21 seeds so I don't know honestly a basic um, sourdough is what I would recommend so if you can get a sourdough from the bakery that is just wheat and water and salt that's gonna be your healthiest bread that you can find Tortillas are amazing vehicles for veggies and proteins and fats and all kinds of good stuff. If you want an alternative tortilla, these are awesome. I always read ingredients on tortillas. Always, always. Okay. We're going to run to the frozen section and then we're out of here, okay? Just close your eyes through this part. I don't want you to get dizzy. <laughs> okay. Here we are. Okay, I'm going to show you these muffins. If you're gluten free, um, or you just, you know, want to reduce gluten in general. This brand, Flax for Life, is awesome. Highly recommend. Uh, we also have a flax muffin recipe on our website under lifestyle, so you can look for that. Make them yourself. Um, again, I don't usually rely too much on this stuff. You guys do just read the ingredients, especially if you're shopping at a mainstream grocery store. Uh, but I did want to show you some of these bean burgers and veggie patties. So more and more brands are kind of getting the hint that like we don't really want everything made with gluten. We don't want everything made with corn or grain. Can we please just use beans um, or like some kind of whole food? So Good Seed Burger is one of those things that you can try. Hot dang. 
Honestly, even the Preggers is okay, uh, Dr. Preggers, but I think that there is grain in there. So, just to clarify, we're not anti-grain, but some people can't really do it. And then things like the Gardein and the Beyond Meat and the, the real processed stuff. So, just because it says vegan, just because it says gluten-free, just because it says fat-free or no soy or non-GMO doesn't mean that it's healthy, okay? Labels don't make something healthy, but everything in moderation. So something like this, you know, if you are vegan and you, you know, desire some of these things, I think there's room for them, but it shouldn't be your everyday protein. The majority of your vegan protein should come from beans, nuts, and seeds. 80% of it, and veggies and whole grains, 80% of it, and then the rest can come from this stuff, right? Um... Every time I come here, they have new stuff. So rice, broccoli, potato cauliflower. I honestly haven't tried that. I don't do a lot of frozen veggies because I am a produce snob. But um, honestly, frozen um, greens are great for smoothies. I do like okra. I'll put that in anything. So something to think about. Frozen fruit, obviously, good for smoothies. Um... I generally try to go organic on the frozen fruit, but it is significantly more expensive, so we just do the best that we can. And I just have one more thing to show you guys, and we're out of here, so. It has been a pleasure. Okay, we're at the deli. Everything I already taught you about meat applies here. No nitrates. Now, this pre-cooked stuff is not terrible to have on hand if you're super busy. You know, you can always say, okay, um, I know I'm gonna be really busy, so I'm gonna grab like a pre-cooked meatloaf or chicken breast with a roasted starchy veg. Actually, this looks good. It's starchy veg and regular veg all in one. Or some cauliflower. And yeah, you can just have it in your, in your fridge and assemble meals as you need. So don't be afraid of that. Obviously, there's always salad bars. I always try to get to the salad bar before it's been picked over just because, I don't know, I guess we talked about this. We talked about being a germaphobe. <laughs> I'm live right now. What are you live doing? Um, let's see, I'm just gonna... <laughs> okay. So this is um, for work, filming grocery store tours for our clients. And so actually I have an online course. And so they're in the course right now. How and so, yeah, yeah, it's awesome. Lucky <laughs> world, you doing that. Go get them. I want to know more, but I can't talk right now. <laughs> Take care of the Thanks, congrats. bye. Uh, that's, that was really funny, you guys, of all, of all the places and all the things. My old boss. Anyway. <laughs> hummus is awesome. You've got to love hummus. Actually, you don't have to love hummus. I went through a phase where I was really over hummus, but now I like hummus again. Um, it's a good snack to have on hand. goes great with cucumbers, veggies, crackers, whatever you need. Um, and that's it, you guys. That is the grocery store. So... That was Whole Foods. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to maybe um, do some more in the future. I definitely will do more in the future. So you guys keep me posted in the Facebook group.